What's up everyone? Today we are going to talk about the milk thistle, which is silymarin, the extract of milk thistle as well. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist, a diabetes education specialist, and your friend to achieve success in diabetes. Let's get started. Hi guys. So again, today we are talking about milk thistle, which is silymarin. A lot of you may have heard about it the benefits about the liver, the brain, the blood sugar. But since you're watching the Sugar MD channel, more than likely you're most interested in the benefits of the milk thistle. Okay, so surprise, surprise, I got something for you. Now this thing, which is our Sugar MD supplement, which a lot of you have heard or used, actually now updated. We have put milk thistle in there provided that my patients told me how milk thistle are helping them with their liver enzymes, with their blood sugars, so we decided to put milk thistle. We improved the formula quite a bit actually with this formula and we made it into capsules. Now it comes in 180 capsules. So, and then the price is much cheaper as well. So I think you will like it. And I'm trying my best guys to really get your diabetes under control with the least expensive possible way to achieve this. Now milk thistle or silymarin definitely is used primarily to treat uh, liver inflammation. It is a powerful antioxidant. As a result, it actually helps prevent the damage in your hepatocytes, which are the liver cells. It's a pretty, uh, pretty plant actually. Look at that. So how pretty that is. So remember, milk thistle is important for diabetics because the liver damage that happens a lot when you have diabetes, especially with type 2 diabetes, guys, uh, a lot of you will develop fatty liver disease and the purpose is not to, but unfortunately, you probably already have fatty liver disease. Now, if you look at your, uh, you know, CMP, BMP, whatever you call it, the metabolic panel your doctors run, and if your ALT, AST, these are elevated or even sometimes ALP elevated, more than likely there is some liver damage going on and if that is the case you need to stop that now of course healthy living and everything we discuss in this channel will help reverse that fatty liver but on the other hand taking some extra measures and improving or making that process a little faster by using a supplement uh, such as a milk thistle may help you know you can eat the milk thistle plant but i'm not sure how many of you will go for that they typically extract the silymarin from that uh, plant and put in variety of supplements like our supplement has it it helps the diabetes control in a few weeks it improves your insulin resistance uh, but most importantly it protects your liver cells from damage which is very important you have only one liver and you want to protect that liver now because of the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory features actually milk thistle can help the brain damage as well now dementia is very common as we get older and especially when you have inflammatory disorders such as the diabetes or vascular disorders the rates of dementia goes way high way faster and again anything you can do to prevent the brain damage from oxidative stress from free radical damage your best bet is using more and more antioxidants as you can and milk thistle is happens to be one of them so guys also cardiovascular disease again the one of the most common reason for cardiovascular disease is insulin resistance pre-diabetes diabetes you name it and all these problems are all interconnected right so fatty liver disease happens due to insulin resistance and then you have diabetes and then heart disease happens so sometimes heart disease even establishes itself before the diabetes happens so as a result you really need to protect protect your heart because guess what if even if you're you can manage your, to bring your blood sugar down to like 100 milligram per deciliter level or in European measurement I don't know like maybe 5.7 or below level I would say you know if you if your heart fails it nothing matters anymore so you need to make sure that yes while you're controlling your diabetes and your blood sugars you need to also protect your heart which is your primary organ to sustain your life so again, I'm not saying go become a supplement junkie and go buy this supplement, that supplement, but I think uh, for my diabetics, I recommend supplements that contain milk thistle. So 
check the link below also in, in the description section also give it a thumbs up uh, give it a like and share this video we'll see you in the next one
Guys, vitamin C is found in berries, citrus fruits, green vegetables. Well, the great sources among the, the green vegetables are asparagus, avocados, the beets, blackcurrants, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cantaloupe, collards, dulls, grapefruit, kale, lemons, mangoes, mustard greens, onions, oranges, papayas, green peas, sweet peppers, persimmons, pineapple, radishes, spinach, strawberries, tomatoes, turnip greens, guys, or the girls, or the ladies. One of my uh, viewers said, You always say guys, that's so annoying. When I say guys, I mean all of you. You know, guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen. Just to make it informal. So, but the bottom line is, yeah, so uh, most people go for, when I say vitamin C, they go for orange juice. Well, freshly squid orange juice is okay, but when you have diabetes, that can really hit you hard. So you have to be very careful about the amount you're getting. So, but as I said, the vitamin C is so common in so many other foods. Foods, you don't necessarily need to drink that orange juice plus we talked about this before we don't want to do processed oranges or uh, I mean orange juices at all so a few comments about the vitamin C you know a lot of people use vitamin C to help prevent the common colds but the studies again and again shows that actually it doesn't really help much with the preventing the colds but if you have the cold and having vitamin C extra can help reduce the number of days that you're having cold and as you know when you have cold your diabetes goes off the chart you know anytime you're sick your body's under stress when you're under stress your body squeezes a lot of cortisol when you squeeze a lot of cortisol any physical or mental stress you are in trouble your blood sugar will be high and anytime you're under stress your body needs more antioxidants and there you go vitamin c helps there it can help your let's say your common cold instead of seven days it can reduce it down to five days which is if you think about it two days of not having a common cold is pretty good deal now who are are really vitamin C deficient or more likely? Well, the guys and girls who drink alcohol and the smokers are more likely than anyone else. If you are on analgesics, like uh, painkillers, if you are on antidepressants, anticoagulants, contraceptives, the steroids, all these things can deplete your vitamin C levels and that as a result, if you are on these agents, you may want to use more vitamin C. So what are the caution? Well, the caution is this. When you overdo the vitamin C, especially more than 2000 milligrams, actually it can turn it against you and do the exact opposite. Instead of becoming an antioxidant it creates oxidative damage again i always talk about the moderation 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 you know if you are deficient you're in trouble if you overdo it you're in trouble so you don't overdo it so never ever exceed more than 500 milligrams now what is another problem with vitamin c well if you are taking more than 500 milligrams of vitamin c especially glucose sensor users you know those sensors that you don't have to do finger sticks and stuff they are affected from excess of vitamin C more than 500 milligrams a day tend to cause high blood sugar readings uh, falsely high so actually you may be low but it may actually show high so that may not be great for you because you know you want to know when you're low uh, and it may cause uh, under treatment of low blood sugars or if you're taking aspirin for example for cardiovascular risk reduction and if you take vitamin C together it can cause a lot of stomach irritation can cause ulcers reflux and problems like that which you may already have so you may want to make sure that if you're on aspirin at least take vitamin C in low dose or just eat take it from the food instead of taking a supplement which can cause stomach irritation if you're pregnant you don't want to take too much vitamin C because you may cause your baby to become dependent on vitamin C if you're taking excessive vitamin C during pregnancy then your baby may end up with problems like scurvy due to dependence on excessive vitamin C. And avoid using chewable vitamin C because they can cause en enamel problems like gum line problems. So that's another thing that I have to caution you about. 
But the bottom line overall, having around 100 milligrams of vitamin C, especially from the foods we discussed, uh, definitely helps. If you are not a vegetable and fruit person and, and you're a steak and potato type of guy or girl, you may want to take some, uh, some vitamin C. Esterified vitamin C appears to be a little bit better. But guys, uh, vitamin C needs to be taken in moderation, not too much, less than 500 milligram a day in total, and that can help lower uh, your blood sugars a little bit as well, not drastically by any means, but if you're especially deficient, can help your insulin resistance. And we talked about the other benefits and risks. So guys, I hope that video helps. Remember to give a thumbs up and share, and we'll see you in the next video.